Hey guys, I'm here to introduce the new inductive limit switches for the CNC long mill. Let's go over some of the benefits and uses of limit switches. The first benefit of using limit switches is of course limiting the travel of your machine. Hard limits physically detect movement and stop the machine, preventing damage. Soft limits do the same, but prevent movements beyond a certain range in software based on where the machine was homed. Here we can see a soft limit was hit, returning an error. Another benefit of using limit switches is the ability to use work offsets to avoid having to reset your work coordinates every time the machine is shut off. Simply run the homing cycle, then you can easily return to a known coordinate for future jobs. You can set work offsets to known points on your table, such as a fixture or a vise, as shown here. We have our first work offset, G54, with its origin set at the corner fixture mounted on this table. We can switch workspaces to our second work offset, G55, which has its origin set at the corner of this table mounted vise. This setup example allows you to maintain different work holding positions for different cutting operations or repeating parts. Another good reason to use limit switches is the ability to restart a job should the machine be stopped or powered off during cutting. This can be extremely helpful if you're cutting expensive material or have a lot of time invested into a job as you can simply restart the job like nothing ever happened. Here we can see the emergency stop has been pressed, meaning the machine has lost its relative position and would have to have its origin reset. Any work done on the part cannot be continued, so the entire job would need to be restarted. Because this machine is outfitted with limit switches, we can simply run the homing cycle and go back to our original work origin. From here, we can run the entire job or just specific cutting operations without scrapping the part. Because the limit switches are very repeatable, all cutting operations will perfectly match those done on the part already. Unlike the use of push type limit switches, our inductive limit switches offer very good repeatability under one thousandth of an inch, ensuring that you can accurately position your machine before starting your next job. This setup shown demonstrates the repeatability of the x-axis limit switch during the homing cycle. To showcase the usefulness of limit switches, we're going to make some wooden drink coasters. We can cut out as many blanks as we like, then align them in our vise for an engraving operation on both sides. In large volume production, having a known fixture position with work offsets can make multi-day jobs much easier and consistent. As long as your material can be consistently aligned in the X and Y directions, all operations you do will be perfectly consistent between jobs. In this case, we use an aluminum profile to ensure our blanks were consistently positioned in the X direction. We then home the machine once more to ensure correct relative position. After homing, we can move our machine to either of our work offsets. To engrave the blanks we just cut out, we'll switch to our G55 workspace and move the machine to the work origin at the corner of the vise. This entire process can be repeated for more jobs, even if the machine is turned off, as long as the necessary work offsets are not overridden. These offsets will always be saved on the machine. To 
install the limit switches, first route the wires for the X, Y, and Z switches through the cable drag chains, just like the motor wires are routed. Make sure to note which cable is for which sensor. Then plug in the white connectors to the corresponding connector on the controller for each axis. On the Z axis, insert the sensor and adjust its height so it hits the Z gantry at its upper limit. Then slide the sensor mount onto the top of the Z gantry. Using a 2.5mm Allen key, tighten the two screws just until the mount cannot slide. Tighten the X axis sensor inside its mount, then slide the mount onto the gantry plate and push forward until it hits the aluminum rail. Tighten the two screws at the back. Slide the Y axis sensor mount onto the front left foot of the machine. Adjust where it sits until the hole lines up with the steel gantry plate in front of it. Tighten the two screws, then insert the sensor and tighten. Gently tighten all three sensors in position with a 17mm wrench until secure. Next, we'll need to configure our settings for use with limit switches within the firmware window of G-Center. We can turn on soft limits, hard limits, and homing cycle, although soft limits and hard limits are optional. By default, the controller is set up to home in the back right corner, so we will need to invert the homing direction in the X and Y direction. Other homing parameters can also be changed, such as the homing locate feed rate, homing search seek rate, homing switch debounce delay, and homing switch pull-off distance. Lastly, if you're using soft limits, we will need to set the maximum travel values for each axis. By default, the maximum X and Y travel is 812 millimeters. Because our machine has a dust boot installed, we set our maximum X travel to 750 millimeters. You may want to home your machine, then jog each axis to where you'd like to set a limit and note down the distance for setting these travel limits. Don't forget to click Apply New Settings to save these changes when finished. To verify that the limit switches are plugged into the correct port on the controller and functioning correctly, we can check the reported status of all limit switches by using the following command in the G-Sender or UGS console. Sending a question mark in the console will prompt a status report. When any steel object is held in front of a sensor, the system will report that sensor as triggered, as shown. With homing enabled, the machine will start in an alarm state when it's first turned on, as it doesn't know its relative position. To home the machine for the first time, simply press home on the top right of g Center. The machine will home the Z axis and then the X and Y axis, and set its coordinates. Make sure you're ready to stop the machine, just in case a sensor fails to trigger or is plugged into the wrong connector. For more information on installing and using limit switches with a long mill, visit the resources page on our website. Thanks for watching.